He's the great-grandson of the founder of the Church of Scientology, and he has spent much of his life trying to get to the truth about his famous relative. Tonight, in an exclusive interview, Jamie DeWolf tells me about his emotional journey to understand his controversial family history. Every family has their black sheep. On my mother's side, our black sheep was a shepherd who enslaved his own flock. Strong words from a performer by the name of Jamie DeWolf, a name you might not recognize. He's a direct descendant of a famous, many would say infamous, man who is known to millions around the world. He was a subject we never talked about at the kids' table at family reunions, but he was my great-grandfather, L. Ron Hubbard. I am the writer of the textbooks of Scientology. After a stint in the Navy during World War II, L. Ron Hubbard moved to Los Angeles. He wrote science fiction stories on commission. Just another name on dime store pulp mags paid only a penny a page until 1949 when he said, you want to know how you really get rich? You start a religion. Hubbard's book Dianetics was the blueprint for Scientology, the religion he ultimately founded. It became a worldwide empire with Hubbard at the helm. It isn't everybody who can write a book that turns the world on its ear. L. Ron knew if you don't have facts, all you need is faith. So we turned his science into a religion, and Scientology was born. As the church grew, it became controversial for its secrecy and for the alleged harassment of people who left the church, including Hubbard's own son, L. Ron Hubbard Jr., Jamie DeWolf's grandfather. My grandfather was hunted pretty much till his last days. My grandfather coming home to photographs of his children in his mailbox, playing on playgrounds, alone and unguarded. He was harassed, he was sued, he was threatened, um, he was constantly followed. In his one-man show, he details how his grandfather had to keep moving from place to place, eventually changing his name to DeWolf. 99% of what my... Uh father wrote and said about himself is totally untrue. It's a story Jamie DeWolf took years to uncover, pumping reluctant relatives for information until he got enough to tell the story of his grandfather and great-grandfather in a monologue he calls The God and the Man. There's a thin line between prophecy and psychosis. It increases one's knowingness. He was not a messiah god who grew up as a blood brother of Indians and then went to the Far East and studied with wise men and then was a dogfighter pilot, a submarine commander, and a nuclear physicist. And, you know, he was a hustler. I've slept with bandits in Mongolia and I've uh, uh, hunted uh, with uh, pygmies in the Philippines. I asked Jamie DeWolf how it feels to be a direct descendant of someone so controversial. Did he do reprehensible things? Sure. I mean, he's still my great grandfather. I still, I still like, I still would have loved to have met the guy. I'd love to hear his tall tales, but I sure as hell am not going to pay him a hundred thousand dollars to tell me about how aliens possess my body. And the show, which has made him a cause celeb in anti-Scientology circles, it's not an attack on the church, he says. It was really my testament to my family history, my genealogy, and why I was who I was. I never met the man who gave me my red hair, the manic depression still twisted in the strains of my DNA, and the first time I saw a psychiatrist, when he asked me if mental illness runs in my family, all I could say was, yes. <laughs> yes, it does. Jamie DeWolf performs that monologue sporadically. His next performance of The God and the Man is March 10th in Sonoma County.